Coming off two of week three's crazier contests, the Bills and Ravens square off in Baltimore with Buffalo operating as three-point road favorites. Denny, we know these are two of the most explosive offenses in the NFL, but questions still abound for Baltimore, mostly in the backfield. J.K. Dobbins flopped in his week three debut, and now Coach John Harbaugh is talking up Justice Hill as, quote, a star. Star. Uh, Seems problematic. What should fantasy (laughs) managers be thinking here? Yeah, well, you know, for for those who didn't pay much attention to the Baltimore backfield, first of all, congratulations in week three. (laughs) Uh, But uh, Kenyon Drake was a healthy scratch last week against New England. Justice Hill had six carries for 60 yards. Dobbins had seven carries for 23 yards. Not not fantastic. Uh, Dobbins did see all three high-value touches out of the backfield. He ran 13 routes to 10 routes for Justice Hill. Um, Hill, as you might you know, know from his uh, six for 60 line, he'll had a way higher yards before contact and evasion rate. I I believe he, he, he appears to be the best running back option. The Ravens have, that doesn't mean he's fantastic. And it doesn't mean that he's going to start dominating backfield touches. Um, But I think John Harbaugh's quote should be taken somewhat seriously. Um, I've rostered justice Hill in a few leagues this week, just, just in case uh, things start trending in his, in his direction and the and the week three usage wasn't hateful i don't think is we you sometimes you know podcasts you know especially if you have four people you kind of zone out a little bit <laughs> and i zoned out just a little bit when denny was talking and i heard you mention hill have the best game and not kidding i was like who is hill on the Ravens? <laughs> 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 like, what? Well, it thanks, sounds like you zoned out more out. than a little bit <laughs> And that was the guy I just mentioned that is apparently maybe their best running back right now. I mean, Crane, was there any is there any data to save J.K. Dobbins? Or is this this kind of situation where we have to like believe our eyes and clearly the team does not think J.K. Dobbins is like healthy enough to play his normal role. And is there any counter to what Denny just said, or is this just kind of how it is right now in the Ravens backfield? Yeah, I mean he had 44% snap share last week. Hill was at 47%. Um but Hill, Hill had the more touches, uh, led the backfield 27% share of team attempts. So, I mean, but this, to me, this is sort of to be expected. Like, Dobbins, you know, didn't start Is it really season. to be expected? I mean, just Dude, Dobbins' so... knee is spaghetti, man. Like, he had so many injuries that he was dealing with. It wasn't just a torn ACL. Apparently, he damaged his meniscus. I think it was, like, his MCL as well. So, like, I, I think even when he's active, he deserves a chance to really get, like, worked up to speed like he destroyed exactly. his knee so even his first game back even if they're saying he is 100 back to like physical health like this could even just be like a mental health thing that you don't want to give a dude who's coming off like a very bad injury 20 carries or 10 in his first game back so i don't know i, I think there's like a lot of like non-spreadsheet factors that we have to think about well he didn't he didn't play from a knee injury he suffered last summer until week three of this season it, i don't think it's i think it is to be expected that he would be in a part-time role to start yeah that's a real shame <laughs> but yeah i, I mean they, we, we can't say they didn't warn us i, I think like, we'll get uh, to a better role at some point though i mean like just when you think about like if he is maybe he's never the same type of running back but if he is like the talent discrepancy and like the draft capital discrepancy between him and justice hill i think is important and what we saw from from jk dobbins you know it was two years ago now but what we saw from him in his debut was really promising so i don't know i think i think eventually there's still room for his talent to just create a role that we didn't see in his debut to 51 total are any of you willing to flex jk dobbins this week denny would you be willing to flex jk dobbins no way crane saying no way kyle any chance you're flexing jk dobbins i mean like if you didn't win the khalil herbert bit off the jamal williams bit off in your fab leagues and you've been sitting on jk dobbins like it's a sweat you're just hoping he gets like 10 for 60 and a touchdown catches two passes but like we got a lot of injuries coming down the pipe i I think i'm only going to rank him as like Maybe I, th- I think maybe I can squeeze him into like RB 36 RB, you know, inside the top yeah. 40. That's, That's not right. Promising. Yeah. That's not great. Yeah. Go put him in your flex, but I'll probably put him in my RB two, which is a Ooh. weaker spot for me. Oh, man. Man. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. This is this. That, that's just, that was like the most subtle shot ever at the running back position. Um, <laughs> yeah. Not... Don't, don't put a running back in the flex. What are you doing? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I have him just inside the top 40. So outside the flex ranks crane sticking with you. Is there a Rashad Bateman spiked week coming? He has 226 yards on eight catches. <laughs> like, like, this is like ridiculous, like per catch production, but he has only eight catches. So it hasn't really been getting home in fantasy. 
and this really high total game, the, the, the Bills are kind of getting caught up in shootouts. Um, is there any spiked week hope for Rashad Bateman this week? I actually do think there is, and I benched Bateman in a couple of leagues last week because uh, I was worried about how much he was out there. Because it's not just the per target and per catch production, it's per route. I mean, he has been super efficient on his routes among players uh, with 70 plus percent route participation. He is he has 3.05 yards per out run that trails only Jalen Waddle, Tyreek Hill and Julio Jones this season. So he's been hyper efficient, but we know we can't count on, you know, really any player to just crush on limited routes. And that's why I think it was so important to see last week him get up to a 79 percent route rate. That's a that's a right we can do something with and and hopefully maybe even moves up a little bit from there. He's been so good, kind of just makes so much intuitive sense for him to do that. He is going to be boom bust. His profile is definitely very boom bust, even if he's out there a lot because he has a 17.6 a dot. He's kind of filled in for the Marquise Brown deep threat role, which makes a lot of sense in terms of what this offense needs. He's been awesome in that role, so I don't really see that changing. So I think we will get some more spike weeks, but you know you're also going to have some disappointing weeks with that kind of deep downfield usage being inconsistent Kyle on the other side of the ball speaking of inconsistent Gabe Davis through the first three games partly because he missed the game but maybe he's not 100% healthy he missed practice on Thursday he's downgraded I don't I don't know if we've really seen concern that he might miss this game but this is assume Gabe Davis is going to play and just talk about the situation like writ large is there any concern for Gabe Davis that you know as he's kind of getting off to this false start that Stefan Diggs might just be too good this year for Gabe to really get in the top 24, or do we just need to keep the faith in this elite offense? I think to me, the concern wouldn't be that Stefan Diggs is too good. I mean, this is uh, right now, I believe your number one team in pass rate over expect and number one team in overall passing yards. They're lighting teams up. We, we shouldn't be concerned that there's only room for one option. This offense. I think we have to be concerned that Gabe Davis just isn't that good right now. He ranks, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, he ranks 104th out of 113 eligible receivers on at least 30 routes in targets per route run. He's just going out there and, and not earning looks when he's just running these sort of deep wind sprint. Yeah, we're, we're all nodding at you. I'm Let's... not, I'm not selling, I'm not selling out yet. I, I still like, <laughs> I think he's like a sneaky DFS play after he got a little bit of steam in Boston last week. He ran, 96 percent routes last week and 100 in week one so i'm not concerned too much about the health uh, i'm not concerned about his role as far as getting on the field but when he's not earning targets and his competition outside of digs is mckenzie and jameson crowder he's been hurt maybe maybe i mean i'm still sort of maybe. optimistic <laughs> well, maybe, what are you maybe. suggesting <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a bit of a, a false flag operation to excuse the the poor production. Now, I don't know. Maybe the the hurtness is why he's not doing a lot, but like he's been bad so far. He's just been out there running a lot of wind sprints. Does that mean like we have a two game sample on him and he's playing nearly every snap on the best offense in the NFL? So that's why I'm holding the faith, right? Because guys who play a ton of snaps alongside Josh Allen are guys I want to consistently be betting on. And he leads the team in average depth of target. So he's going to be among the crew, probably the volatile one. The one who goes out, doesn't get, you know, doesn't get home on two or three of his deep shots. And that's kind of the day ruined for him. And then I'll have days where he goes out and he connects on both of them and goes 150 and two touchdowns or something. So I want to keep betting on him. But I, I do think kind of we, we oversold the ability of him to sort of be a 1B in this offense based on our two-game sample. I see. I don't think so. I mean, we like he—he he was nursing an ankle injury last week, and the A dot point is the key point. He had a sixteen point four A dot week one, so yeah, his target per route run thirteen percent in that game wasn't great, wasn't good even, but he still had thirty six percent of the air yards, which is very good because he gets targeted downfield. Players who get targeted downfield consistently generally earn less, like targets less frequently, right? It's harder to earn a target. 16 yards downfield than it is to earn one if you're Isaiah McKenzie at like seven yards downfield. So I don't know. We've got we've got that game. Then we've got this game where he was like completely invisible as he comes back from the ankle injury. To me, I, I don't think that tells us a whole lot. And the fact that he was out there for 96% route participation in his first game back from an ankle injury also to me shows me that they do want Gabriel Davis playing a like true full-time role in this offense. So to me, I'm like, I think it's like mildly bullish that he came back to that level of snaps and routes. And I'm just not even really considering <laughs> last week in terms of the talent evaluation, the guy, you know, coming back from an ankle injury, deep threat with a bum ankle, probably not going to draw that many targets. 
Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.